My name is Antonio Lain, and I'm the founder of Caviar's Labs. Let's talk about WAVs, web application backgrounds. We build collaborative apps in the browser with two independent layers. The top layer contains the video and audio components provided by APIs from Daily, Zoom, Twilio, or Microsoft. It has a transparent background and you can just click through it. The bottom layer is a web containing your application logic. And using the top left menu, we can swap the webs without affecting the comms layer. By keeping them separate, we can switch providers without changing the user experience or pick an amazing web from the KBS cloud to customize it. Let's start a comms layer using the daily video APIs. I'm using a physical screen, but if you don't have one, we have also integrated the MediaPipe SDK from Google. Let's leave it with the physical one. By having two separate layers, you can switch to a bokeh mode with just one line of CSS. The video is also drawn with WebGL, and that means that the GPU will be able to provide 3D effects at frame rate. But the most radical change with WAPS is a new architecture. Before WAPS, the source will have to take the video and the background, merge it locally, and then broadcast it everywhere. But the web has a URL, so we can ship the URL to all the endpoints, and then it will be running locally everywhere. In that case, the, the source will just have to take the segmented talking head video and just broadcast it, delaying the merge with the output of the web until it reaches the endpoint. The challenge with this approach is that we have to synchronize the video with actions on all these web app instances. But if you write your web with the KBS framework and host it in the KBS cloud, we will be able to scale it to thousands of them. And this is a game changer, as I'm going to show you in a moment. Let's invite others by sharing a URL. And now when I change the slides, they change everywhere. But of course, an unprivileged client cannot change the slides for everybody else. Note also that the background is pixel perfect and animations will be running smoothly at 60 frames per second. The video that you are seeing is almost identical to what is coming from my 1080p camera and using only one me megabit per second of bandwidth. The key is that we have cropped and replaced the background by a solid green, make making it much easier to compress. What about the WAP? WAPs are typically implemented with a Jamstack-like architecture. So we optimize pages of line and cast them everywhere using a CDN. So for example, here, what you're seeing is Gatsby slides cast on, on, on top of a github.io free CDN. And coordination of these pages is also very efficient because you just need a packet every few seconds. So what this all means is that you ended up having 1080p perceived quality for a third of the cost. And if you don't want to see me, that will be a tenth of the cost.
Let's change the WAP by a ScaliDraw whiteboard. And see how all the endpoints load the new web app. And the first thing they do is sync the state with the current state. So now they can all draw. But not only that, we can also personalize what everybody sees. So we have created a, a macro called session. That will get replaced by the, the current value of the session ID that is actually different in every single client. So now you can have personalized content. So the slides could be in your own language. The examples will be related to things that you care about. And unfortunately, you will also get personalized ads. WAPs can also talk with local devices using APIs like Web Bluetooth. So for example, here I'm showing you my heart in real time using a device called a Healthy Pi that is a Bluetooth ECG monitor. And we can also enable others to interact with our local devices. So for example, I'm going to share a Bluetooth ball that is actually pointing at my face and then allow others to change the color. And you, you see how all these interfaces are always in sync and also in sync with the physical world. But this is not only about my devices. So since the Wabi's instances are running everywhere, anybody can share their own devices. And then KBS will be able to orchestrate changes in real time across all of them. And what about AR and VR? They are a natural platform for collaboration. But there's going to be a long transition in which we also have to live with legacy devices. Now, because we have a web app instance running in every endpoint, we could actually change the user interface based on which device it is running on. So for example, here, let me show you a VR user interface to control the bulb. And as you see here, the changes are consistent with other user interfaces and also with the physical world. Let's summarize what we have seen today. We first introduced the web architecture that split the comms from the application and runs the application logic everywhere using web instances synchronized with KBJS. Then we highlighted a few advantages of this approach. A consistent experience across different vendors that can be customized with best of breed WAPs. Massive bandwidth savings while providing a 1080p-like experience. Personalization of each stream while controlling interactivity. Sharing of local devices between participants of the session and providing an incremental path for VR and AR. To learn more about KBJS, visit our website. The framework and the Hello Web example are open source and they are in GitHub. You can sign up for free and without a credit card to the KBJS cloud, and we would love to hear from you. Thanks for listening.